prayer as we begin this morning. Before we get into Isaiah, chapter, finishing chapter 9, and then eventually going to chapter 10. Most High Yah, we give you thanks and praise and honor today, and we ask that your spirit would be with us and guide us and direct our path, that your name would be uplifted and honored and glorified in our obedience to your word by the power of your spirit of righteousness in the name of the Messiah, Yahweh Child, we pray. Amen. All right. All right. So we're going to begin with the three scriptures that before we get into Isaiah chapter nine today this morning, we're going to begin with the three scriptures that we normally begin with on Sabbath morning. First one is Exodus chapter thirty one. Exodus chapter thirty one from verses twelve to eighteen. Exodus chapter thirty one from verses 12 to 18. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that ye may know I am Yahweh. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation, for perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of the Most High. The next one is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, with Yahweh thy most high hath driven thee, and shalt return unto Yahweh thy most high, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy most high will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, with Yahweh thy most high have scattered thee. If any of them be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy Most High gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And Yahweh thy Most High will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. And Yahweh thy Most High will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed. To love Yahweh thy most high with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And Yahweh thy most high will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh, and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And Yahweh thy most high will make thee plenty in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy father. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy most high, to keep his commandments and his death, which are written in this book of the law, 
And if thou turn unto Yahweh thy most high with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That was Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. Last but not least, Revelation, Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before Yahweh on their seat, fell upon their faces and worshipped Yahweh, saying, We give thee thanks, O Yahweh al Shaddai, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power in his reign. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the day that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of Yahweh was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightning and voices and thunder and an earthquake and great hail. Praise the most high. Thank you, Isha, for posting those scriptures. So today, we're embarking on the final part of chapter 9 of the prophecy of Isaiah. And <clears throat> as we're in Revelation, let's, let's look at some scriptures that are going to help us when we go to Isaiah. Um, we like to have an understanding by the Spirit of the Father, not only what the Bible is saying to us in truth, but also how it relates to us in the day in which we live. We being what we believe is the last generation on planet Earth, uh, the last generation before the Earth is renewed and the covenant renewed with the Father and his chosen people, the last generation of the existence of spiritual modern Babylon, we, we, we want to know <clears throat> where uh, these things fit where we are. And they should fit where we are because the Bible is, is, a, is a book, or a volume of several books from 40 different Hebrew prophets that talk about many things, but it definitely talks about, definitely warns, definitely uh, admonishes the last day people. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Let's see. Yeah. Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> going to begin at verse 8. And I'm going to read from verse 8. Going to read from verse 8 down to verse 15. From verse 8, actually down to verse 16. From verse 8 down to verse 16, Revelation chapter 22. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship Yah. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, 
that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Yahweh, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the church. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Couple of things here. We are living in the time where he says the time is at hand. He's talking about the next verse. He says the time is at hand in, in, in verse 10, and he's, and he's referring to the next verse. And what does that mean? The time is at hand, brothers and sisters, where there'll be no more changing of people's character. Like right now, a person could confess their sin to the Father in the name of the Messiah and receive in, from Messiah, from the Father through Messiah, the spirit of righteousness. A person could do these things and be changed. A person could do these things and be changed and have their characters changed from a character of sin to a character of righteousness. It could be done. It's a miracle, but it could happen. But as we are now getting closer and even closer to the return of Messiah, the spirit of the father is doing what it did or what he said it would do in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, the father told Noah, my spirit shall not always strive with man. See, it is the father's spirit striving on the hearts of men that causes a person to repent of sin, to receive conviction. When the Father's Spirit is no longer striving with men, men no longer receive conviction. When men no longer receive conviction, their sins remain, and they remain in their sin. The time is coming now when that will be the case, when there'll be no more changing of character. The Spirit of the Father will have withdrawn from people that have rejected it for the final time. And he will double down on people that are his. He will double his spirit on those that are his to be sealed. And he will remove his spirit forever to never convict again the doomed and damned. And, and at that time, in that time when that happens, people will be remaining in the character traits that they are. If they are unjust, if they're unholy, if they're filthy, they're going to remain in those character traits. If they're in righteousness, they're going to remain forever in the character of righteousness. So, Messiah is saying, my reward is with me when I return. Right? And he's warning us to be prepared to do the Father's commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates, into the city. And then he goes into those that are not going to be inside the city. And among those that he mentions are people that loveth and maketh a lie. Very important, brothers and sisters, that we understand the difference between what a truism is, what is true, and what is a lie. I try to make it simple. A lie is something that is not what someone says it is. Or, for example, if someone says that this is X and it's not X, they're lying. A lie is a deception. It's to, it's to make something appear one way, but not, it's not really that way. That's what a lie is. It's a deception. It's to make some it's to make a statement that something is one way when it's not that way. And to make a statement that something is another way when it's not that way. Or to try to speak, for example, on on behalf of the Father and the Father has not sent you. That's a lie. Okay? That's what a lie is. And it's important. That as Yah's chosen people, we do not follow lies. We follow that which is true. Now, what is truth? The Father is truth. Everything he says is truth. Everything he is is truth. Anything opposite of the Father is a lie. So, Asatan is a liar. Let's take a look at that. Gospel of John, chapter 8. Don't be surprised. If for some reason we have computer problems today, I wouldn't be surprised at that. But, Gospel of John, chapter 8, a one thing a liar hates, 
a liar, any liar. And let's 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 look at it this way, brothers and sisters. We can get this very personal. We can get this very personal. How do we get this very personal? Well, you and I know we've all lied at some point, right? All of us have. Is that true? All of us have at some point. All of us have lied, right? So wait, when you lie and you know you're lying, right? One thing you try to avoid when you lie is to be exposed for lying. <laughs> is that true or not? The one thing you don't want to be when you are lying is to be exposed for lying, right? That's the whole purpose of the deception. You don't want to be exposed or you want something to be, you don't want something, to, you want to hide something or you want to, you know, divert something. You don't want it to be exposed. Well then, our Satan has the greatest fear of anyone of being exposed. He has the greatest fear of being exposed, right? Let's take a look at Gospel of John, chapter 8. Messiah is rebuking. He is rebuking the religious leaders among his chosen people in Jerusalem of his day. Among his chosen people. He's rebuking them. Watch this. Gospel of John, chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 34 down to verse 44. Yahweh shall answer them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen of my father, and ye do that which ye have seen of your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahweh shall said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of Yah. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even Yah. Messiah said unto them, If Yah were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from Yah. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So brothers and sisters, Asatan is the father, the originator of lies. So he, he can claim credit for creating something, right? He created the lie. How did he do it? Very simple. He went against the word of the father. If the father is truth and you go opposite of his word, that makes you a liar. Testing one, two, three. Are we there yet? So, brothers and sisters, it's important for us to understand what lies are and what truth is. A lie goes against the Father's word for our purposes because we believe, now I'm not saying everybody needs to believe this, but we believe as Israelites that Yah is our Father and every word uttered by Yah, even directly, or through his prophets is true. Anything that's opposite of that word is false. And as a matter of fact, we just read last week, if you recall, from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in it. I used to see some people when I was in the Christian church, I used to stand up, I used to sit, see people stand up and speak and they were speaking falsehoods and I would and some people it was, the saddest thing wasn't even that they were just speaking falsehoods 
I would inquire of some of my friends in the congregation and some people said, did you hear what I heard? And someone would say, inevitably, somebody would say something like this. Well, there was some light in it. In other words, they acknowledge that the person wasn't speaking completely truth, but then they would say, but there was some light in it. That, that goes against the word of the Most High, right? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in it. We are brothers and sisters. Every perfect lie has many elements of truth in it. If it were, when I say a perfect lie, I mean one that uh, that is successful in deceiving the receiver of the lie, right? So for a, a, a lie to be successful in his work of deception, it, it would uh, will have elements of truth in it. Because if it was a straight lie, nobody would believe it. Well, very few would. But if you want to, if you want it to get over, you got to dress it with some truth. So when somebody says there's some light, that means there's no light. And yet people are drinking this hook, line, and sinker in order to stay in their favorite church. Okay? Yeah. As I said, pray please. Don't be surprised if we have audio issues today. Because Asatan does not like being exposed. So please pray. Okay. So Asatan is the father of lies. No liars entering into the kingdom. We have to really be able to discern truth from lies. Okay. Y'all hear me? Testing one, two, three, for real? Testing one, two, three. Can you hear? In Pal Talk? Okay. We need to be able to discern truth from lies, which means we need to be able to read the word, understand the word, and, and be connected with the Father's Spirit. That's even just as important, if not more important. Because, you know, not all of us have read the word through the way we should. Not all of us have studied it the way we should. But we want to, right? Maybe it's overwhelming for some of us, whatever. But we can all go to the Father and say, Father, is this true? Can't we? We can all go to the Father and say, Father, I want to follow you in truth. Is this what I'm hearing true? Is this what I'm reading true? Or is it false? And he will show you. He is faithful and just. He will show you. He is God of light. He will show you. If it's true. Remember what the Bible says. What the Messiah said to the woman at the well. They that worship the father. Must worship him in spirit and truth. And he added this. He said. For the father seeketh such. To worship him. That's very important. So the father is seeking after people that want to worship him in spirit and in truth. He's seeking after these people. So if you want to be one of them, all you need to do is know his word because you love him and you want to follow his word. And you want to go to your knees and humbly ask, Father, show me the truth. Show me the truth because I want to follow the truth. Father knows the heart of those that are sincere in this desire. And he will answer you 100% of the time. If you're just playing games and faking the funk, he's not going to even, he don't even hear your prayers. Your prayers just bouncing off the ceiling. But if you are being serious and sincere and you want to follow the father and, and you believe the father is light and that he's true, well then, he will show you. Remember, he that comes to Yah must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Okay? So Asatan's a lot. He's the father of life. And because all of us have been stung by sin, all of us at one time or another have lied. So we all know what that feels like. We all know what it feels like to lie and we know what it feels like to have the fear that our lie is going to be exposed. Well, if we're blessed to the Most High, our lie will eventually get exposed. Praise the Most High. And then we'll be able to come to the truth full on, right? And there'll be nothing between us and our father in our conscience. Our conscience will be clear because we'll be telling the truth to him. We'll know the truth. He knows the truth. And we're walking in his spirit. Praise the most high. But in this day and age in which we live, Asatan has many influential agents that are liars after his own heart. 
These influential agents are going to cause millions of people, millions, to lose out on eternal life. Millions. Not that the people that received these lies needed to be deceived. Actually, in the end, they're going to want to be deceived. Isn't that amazing? You're going to have people that are actually cheering for the deception. You already do, actually. Have you ever heard our president speak? <laughs> if you've heard that brother speak, then you know, and you heard people, people cheering for him, then you know people are cheering for lies. Okay? And, and listen, let me not... Let me not uh, limit it. The president before him was a liar too. I, I'm not going to limit it to just the orange man. The black man before him was a liar too. They were both liars. And the Caucasian man before him was a liar too. And the Caucasian man before him was a liar too. They were all liars. They were all liars. As a matter of fact, politicians, for the most part, I can't speak of all politicians, but politicians, for the most part, are tremendous lie. Tremendous lie. Now, all of us have been stung by the lie bug. The difference between those of us that are saved and those that are not, those that are saved have, uh, have understood that we have lied, have brought that to the Father, have repented of our lie, and tried to make restitution for the damage our lies caused. Amen? Try to make restitution of some sort for the lamb. You know, at least you apologize. At least you apologize. You try to make it right. And then you ask the Father to forgive you. And then, then you move on and you seek to, to live in spirit and in truth the whole time you live, you know, for the glory of the Father. The difference there is other people would rather stay in the lie. They don't want to be exposed. Remember what we read last night? Messiah said, when the light shines on people that are standing in truth, they love it. It's good. When the light shines on people that don't want the light, they want darkness, they don't like that because they don't want to be exposed. Okay? People have all kinds of motives for lies. All kinds of motives. Asatan's motive is to take over the earth and have people worship him. That's what he wants. It's about worship. That's what many people don't understand. Asatan's game is about worship. It's about man listening to him and not listening to the Father. How does man listen to Asatan? Man listens to Asatan when man believes he can be a god. When man believes he is in perfect control of everything and nothing can stop him. When he believes that, he's on Asatan's territory. When a woman starts to believe she's a goddess and she can rule the way a man is supposed to, she's already on his territory. He's, she's brought into his life. The number one lie of Asatan is man can be God. And that angel can be God. He, that's his lie right there. See, that's Asatan's lie. He loves that one. That's the main one. We know that's the main one because that's what he pitched to Eve when he got her to fall. You could be a god. Really? Let me eat this fruit then. Okay? Now, brothers and sisters, father being who he is, it would be really disrespectful for any person to try to be the father Right? The best we can do is be like the Father. But to call yourself a God, you're trying to say you're the Father. Right? So the best we can do is try to emulate the Father. We want to emulate his character of righteousness and truth, absolutely. But we can never say we are God. But yet, that's what Asatom has the world believe. Especially powerful people, so-called powerful people, people with a lot of money, a lot of influence, right? Those people, they think they're gods because they rule things on this earth. So now let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, where we finished up last night, where we stopped. Because we're going to talk some more about lies and liars. Because brothers and sisters, it's very important, again, that we discern, the spirit of discernment, we discern what is true versus what is a lie. Isn't that right? It's very important. And Father, it's amazing. Father will give us that discernment. You know, brothers and sisters, one of the ways that Asatan causes us to fall for a lie 
is what he did with Eve is what he does with us. He tries to appeal to a desire that's in us. You hear? He tries to appeal to a desire we have. Like, if you have a desire for a thing, it might be a good thing or a bad thing. doesn't matter. He tries to use that desire that you have to get you trapped in a lie. To get you trapped in a lie. Desire. You know, you think you need money or you think you need love or you think you need sex or you think you need whatever it is you're desiring. He has this desire. And, and now he uses that to get you to buy into a lie. That's what he does. That's why it's important for us, all of us, to bring our desires to the Father and learn to trust the Father's decisions on those desires. Sometimes it's difficult. I'm not trying to act like we should all, it's not easy. The answer is easy, but it's not easy for us to do because that calls on us to wait on the Father, right? You say, wait on Yahweh. That's what the Bible says. Wait on him, I say. It says, wait on him, right? And because we have problems waiting, and again, that brings back again to what Messiah has said, impatience possess your soul. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah because it takes patience to wait on the Most High. He wants to develop that patience and trust in us. And brothers and sisters, Asatan will use our impatience against us. He will. He'll use our impatience against us. Happened to me many times. I'm not speaking from theory. I'm speaking from experience. Happened to me many times. By the grace of the Most High, I'm learning to discern when it's coming so I can learn to wait. Praise the Most High, Yah. Let's continue Isaiah chapter 9. So he's, the Most High is rebuking the Northern Kingdom for their lack of trust in him, lack of waiting on him, lack of love of truth. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to read from verse, uh, let's see, from verse 11. I'm going to read from verse 11 down to verse 16. From verse 11 down to verse 16, Isaiah chapter 9. From 11 to 16. Therefore, Yahweh shall set up adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek Yahweh of hosts. Therefore Yahweh will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. So he's talking about a people that is going to be destroyed. They're being destroyed because they're following lies and they're not trusting the most high. He said he's going to cut off head and tail, branch and rush. The head is the prophet. He said the head is the ancient and honorable. People sometimes, you're supposed to have respect for the ancient and honorable, but there's no fool like an old fool. What we used to say, there's no fool like an old fool. Just because a person is old doesn't always mean they know what they're talking about. Although many times they do, you should respect them. But if it's going against the word of the Most High, if it goes against the word of the Most High, like I'll give you an example. I respect my earthly father. I respect my earthly father. I have deep respect for my dad. I do. But when the Most High showed me and he told me by voice of his spirit, this woman, talking about my wife, was now my wife is going to be 36 years. He said, this woman is the one I have picked for you. He showed me that. He said, this is her. And so, uh, at that moment, I began to act as if that was the case. And it became the case. And so now we got engaged eventually and I called my dad. My wife is Puerto Rican, Boricua. My father had a problem with that. And he said, don't marry them. Don't get with them. Don't, don't, don't do that. And he had other reasons that were just as silly as that for me to not marry this woman. But the verse came to me 
and it made him very angry. And I said to my father, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Ooh, he didn't like that at all, at all, at all. But yet it was true. Yet it was true. So he was ancient and honorable to me, and I respect my father always, but there are some situations where the father in heaven is saying, this is the way, and my earthly father was saying, no, that's not the way. Well, who am I supposed to believe? I have to trust in my heavenly father. See? So ancient and honorable is beautiful, unless it's not speaking truth. And then he says, a prophet that teacheth lies is the tale. False prophets. Now, in the Bible, brothers and sisters, now we think about prophets. When you think about prophets today, you think of basically, you're thinking of somebody that foretells future events. Right? Mostly when you think of a prophet, you're thinking of somebody that foretells future events. That's what you're talking. That when you when you hear prophet. But that's not all a prophet is. A prophet is a person that's speaking with an inspired spirit of the Father on behalf of the Father. It might be a future event. It might be a teaching. It might be a rebuke. That is what the, really, biblically, that's a prophet. It's an inspired person. A person that's speaking from his mouth, inspired by the Father's spirit. That's what the Bible calls a prophet. So then you have people here in this particular situation is saying people that are acting as if they are inspired by the Father, but they're not. They're speaking words that the father didn't send them to speak. They're speaking words that are deceiving people. Therefore, they are lying. Where did this originate? Well, we know who it originated with, but let's see how it happened in Revelation chapter 12. Where well, we find ourselves quite often, Revelation chapter 12. Remember what it says here. He says he's going to send, he said he's going to, he's going to, he's going to cut off Head and tail. And he said the head is the ancient and honorable, right? And he said the prophet that teaches lies is the tail, right? You got head and tail. Head is ancient and honorable. Tail is prophet that teaches lies. Okay. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Going to read Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1. Down to verse 4. Revelation chapter 12. From 1 to 4. Watch carefully. Revelation 12. 1 to 4. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child. Cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold. A great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the star of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. A woman here with the crown of twelve stars is a representation of the nation of Israel, the children of Israel. And of course, the child that was birthed from the children of Israel is the Messiah. And of course, the great red dragon is Asatan. And he has, he has the Bible says he has seven heads and 10 horns, and he had a tail. So he's ancient and honorable, but he's also a prophet that teaches lies. You got me? So he, so his lies caused a third of the angels of heaven to fall. So, he didn't just deceive Eve. You sisters, you got deceived. The Bible does say you got deceived. It's all good. You still can be saved, praise the Most High. But you imagine the angel. Man is made a little lower than the angel. Angels are more intelligent, more powerful. They got more dimensions than we got. And yet, this same being deceived a third of the Father's created being in heaven. Deceived a third with his life. This is a master. He is the master life. Okay, he is the master life. And he's old. Asatan has been around thousands of years. So we can say he's ancient. Isn't that correct? He is ancient. He's old. He's been around thousands of years. See, that's why, you see, you guys think psychics can tell the future. 
No, psychics are under the power of Asatan's spirit. And how can Asatan tell what's going to happen? Brothers and sisters, let me explain to you. Just say you've been living with a person for 40 years or 50 years. You know, some of you have. I know I've been with my wife, like I said, 36 years. Keep with me 36 years. Or your mother, or your father, or your children. You know them all, you know these people all your life. And you know them very well. Given in a situation, you can almost tell this is what you're going to do, this is what that, this, that, that is what you're going to do because you know the person. You understand? Testing one, two, three. You know the person. You say, okay, this is what they're going to do. See? My wife said, I did X, Y, and Z because I knew you were going to do A, B, and C. And 90% of the time, she's right. 90% of the time, she's right. Because she's been around me a long time. My mother would say, this is what you're thinking about right now. This is how you're feeling right now. Even born to my wife, because my mother had me. You're feeling disgusted, she would say. And she's reading me exactly, because she knows me. Now, imagine that. Multiply it by millions. And say your brain doesn't forget any little detail about any person. In other words, you know the person. You know the person's parents. You know the person's parents' parents. And you can go all the way back to that person accurately to the day of Adam. You can go all the way back. And you don't forget anything. So now, how much knowledge do you have now? How well will you know what people are getting ready to do now? Based on all that history that you know and you haven't forgotten any. You got a mind of perfect recall. You don't forget anything. You understand? That's why psychics can know what they know. Because Asatan, who is that spirit that's been around thousands of years and hasn't forgotten any detail, he can set up the whole situation and give the spirit to the psychic. He could do it. He, he was there. You understand? And so he's combining that with his ability as a master liar, and you have a formidable enemy. Formidable enemy. Okay? And that's, that's exactly right. That's why they're called familiar. <laughs> they're called familiar because you're familiar, right? You, you know them. Familiar spirits. Yeah. So, that being the case, brothers and sisters, we can see that he caused a third of high level beings to fall by his lie. He's now on the earth and he's disseminating lies. And we can see the effects of his lies. Most people around the world call this man that they, that comes out the Vatican with a white suit on Holy Father. They call him Holy Father. How could you call a man Holy Father? And yet the millions, multiplied millions of people on the earth are deceived. They're calling this man Holy Father. Hmm? It's true. It's true. How could you have a people that are, that are not Semitic? that come from the north and Japheth call themselves the chosen people of Abraham. And they're not even related to Abraham. This is the level of deception we're dealing with. Okay? This is the level of deception that we're dealing with. Okay? So we can see, brothers and sisters, in our day, we already noted that politicians are terrific liars. Terrific liars. But the greatest liars on planet Earth today are preachers. Preachers are the greatest lie today. Why do I say that? One of the things that makes a lie very effective, brothers and sisters, one of the things that makes a lie very effective is that the liar has the trust of his, of his uh, target. Let's call it that. The liar has the trust of the target. You see, politicians are liars, but most of us acknowledge and understand that governments and politicians lie. All of us, if you're old enough, you've experienced their lies for yourself. They always lie. They promise something and they don't deliver. Or they promise something and they don't deliver and try to talk you into thinking they did deliver. But they're lying, right? It's, it's pathetic, even. But a preacher, you see, most people trust it when that man or and that woman step into the pulpit, most people trust them automatically. Automatically. And if you add a little charisma, 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 you add a little charisma to that, little joke telling, little clean look, little this, little that, they trust that person already explicitly. 
And if you add to that uh, somebody that can sing, somebody that can make music and get into your feelings with the music, and then you come behind that with the charismatic person, you got they got the trust. You understand? Testing one, two, three. You hear what I'm saying? These are ways in which the preachers set up the preachers. That's why you have big bands and musicians and choirs and, and most powerful voices of singers. They come to the churches to sing. Now, and there's obviously nothing wrong with music. We love music. But when the music is used in a way to connect to your emotional being so that now you are vulnerable to believing lies, now it's a weapon against you. You test it. Hear, you hear what I'm saying? So now somebody comes off and they bring a soft, a message and music. They call them even ministers of music. And they are. I believe musicians are powerful ministers. They really are. Because they can affect people's emotions in a powerful way. They can inspire people, right? You and I, I, I think I'm telling the truth when I say all of us have been inspired by some music at some point, right? All of us have been inspired by some music at some point. It's powerful. There's no question. It's powerful. Music came from the Father. He said he's going to sing over us in Zephaniah. Praise the Most High. He, he said, let them praise him with the songs, with the song, with the music, with the harps and all of that. Yeah, he invented music, but Asatan was there and he was given the gift. And so, yes, the preachers are the most dangerous liars because they set you up to trust them. They use music, they use char charisma, they use the way they dress, the way they act, they use all of that to get your guards down. And then they can imp they can they can they can put lies in, this, in 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 their in their message that reaches your ears and your heart. That's why brothers and sisters, while music is beautiful, it's nice, uh, brothers and sisters. We have to be so on alert, on alert against liars. Notice what it said when we read Isaiah. Notice again Isaiah chapter nine. Isaiah chapter nine. Notice what it said about. The people that receive these lies. Notice what it says. Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. Isaiah 9, 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. So the end result of being led by liars is destruction. Now, brothers and sisters, let's be real. Let's be real. Father is our leader. Messiah is the representative of the Father, so he's also our leader. I'm a, you hear what I'm saying? Just as Moses led the children of Israel, and the Father spoke through Moses, the Father is now speaking through Messiah, and Messiah is the leader, and, and of course, the Father is, is the leader. But honestly, honestly, all of us realize people follow people, right? I mean, we, we people follow people. Isn't that correct? People follow people. We don't want to admit that, but that's the truth. People do follow people. They do. They, you know? And so that being the case, you know, I used to say, be careful. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Because it, the people you follow can lead you to eternal death can lead you to death. The people that are that you follow can lead you to death. They can deceive you. And, and how do you know? Again, ask your heavenly father. He'll tell you. Ask him. Go to his word. It'll tell you. Study it. Search it. Search it out. You know? Messiah told somebody, asked a question. He said, what do you read in the scripture? I mean, how how you reading? What do you, what you find? What you find it? They asked him, What's the greatest commandment? He said, what do you find in the scripture? How do you read? How do you read? How read is that? He said, well, from what I read, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. This is the greatest commandment. And he said, and he said, you have not far from the kingdom. He said, that's exactly right. He asked him, how are you reading the scripture? What are you getting? So brothers and sisters, we also learn the scriptures of the Father. And when you don't understand, it's all good. Go to the Father on your knees and ask him for his spirit. He will show you. Then go back to the word again. He will show you. Because then you're safe. There's safety in the Father's spirit of righteousness. And there's safety in his word. There is no safety when we're off of these grounds. When you leave his word. And you leave his spirit. You are vulnerable. 
And what Asatan does is he uses these slick talking preachers. He he makes he showers them with money. So, you know, and automatic, especially in the black community, I just gotta tell you all the truth, especially in the black community, but it's the Caucasian community too. It's the Chinese community too, but especially in the black community, somebody roll up on you looking like they dripping with money, you they automatically got your respect. That you they automatically got your respect. You know, that's the truth about it. But that should not be how an Israelite looks at it. No, you should not let somebody's private jet. Somebody's nice car, somebody's nice suit, somebody's stadium full of people. That shouldn't be impressing you if you're an Israelite. Uh -uh. The only thing that impresses you as an Israelite is obedience to your father, period. Glory for him, period. Everything else is a smoke screen. Everything else. I remember once I was a financial advisor. This was another life, <laughs> 20, 25 years ago. And when I first started, I had a, a guy that was training. I mean, he was like 32, 33, and he had him a brand new Jaguar and brand new paid for a house. He was making all kind of money. And I had a beat up Ford uh, Aerostar, if y'all remember the Ford Aerostar. I mean, he used to make noises like it was a teapot getting ready to boil when I drove it. And so I had to go see prospects in this vehicle. And I was like, man, what I literally used to do is park the vehicle. I would not pull up in the driveway. I would find where the house was and park a block away and walk up on it because I didn't want nobody to see me, much less hear it. So we were talking and I had to do a lot of my appointments, you know, over the phone because of that. So I call people and try to get them to, to talk to me over the phone. And, and, and the dude said, he said, he said, you think if I pulled up in the driveway without even an appointment with my Jaguar and my, and he had like a $3,000 watch on and all of that. He said, you think they talk to me? I said, yeah, they talk to you because they, they see you dripping with money. They, that's the impression you get. He said, well, that's what the impression you got to give. He said, when you start making commission, buy you an expensive watch, buy you expensive clothes. He said, I know you can't afford it. He said, but believe me, it's going to make you more money. You know, he was right. <laughs> he was right. But by doing that, that's why I ended up getting cars repossessed too because I was getting cars I really couldn't afford, you know. But anyway, we we as people, man, we will, we will automatically... Start trusting people if they if they smell like they got money on a celebrity, you know. Oh, I saw LeBron James at the at the mall. I saw just being near somebody with power and money and fame like that makes us feel like we got something. But see, brothers and sisters, that's Asatan. That's him right there. He's deceiving us. Don't let him deceive you. To the law and to the testimony, we gotta be firm on the word of the Most High. We gotta be firm on it. That can't be compromised. You understand? It's got to be according to the word of Yah. It's got to be according to the spirit of Yah. This is our eternal destiny we're dealing with. It's no joke. It's our eternal destiny. So here, one of the signs that the northern kingdom was going to be destroyed, one of the signs that they were going to be destroyed was that they were having ancient and honorable men and prophets that were teaching lies. And the people were trusting these lies. And because they were trusting in these lies, they would be destroyed. And brothers and sisters, don't don't marvel. You got mil millions. Don't worry about it. you've been deceived. All of us been deceived. If we were in sin, we were deceived. Huh? We had all come out of darkness to come into Yah's light. So if we were if, if we weren't born in the light, praise the most high. We had to come to the light, praise the most high. That being the case, all of us been deceived. If somebody was to tell you, oh, I'm so smart, or imply that they've never been deceived, they themselves are lying. They themselves are lying. And some of these fools out here doing that, acting like they so smart, they've never been deceived or they know everything. Listen, we just described the being that's been around thousands of years with perfect, with perfect memory. He don't forget nothing. He don't need to write notes. He remembers. You can't deal with that. <laughs> Shoot. Uh-uh. You got to have the Father Spirit with you. The father that created him gives you his, gives you power also. You got to have that father's spirit with you. And you got to have his word with you. This is what he ordained. See, because Adam and Eve did not trust his word. He gave them a command. Don't eat of the tree. They distrusted his word. What he do for us now? He said, you want to be with me? I need to know you trust my word. I need to know you trust my word. So he's written it and he wants us to trust. It. And he tests us on. It. Tests us on. 
Let's continue. Let's finish this chapter, Isaiah chapter 9. That's really what I wanted to focus on today. Because brothers and sisters, liars are abundant. They're in rampant around here. You know, in, in the earth, the earth, the air is filled with lies. Preachers lying, politicians lying. Filled with lies. The air is filled with it. It's darkening the air so much. So we got to be able to overcome the lies. And the Father has given us every tool we need in the ability to pray and the ability to read if we have the ability to read. But even if we don't, just the praying ability to seek the Father's Spirit, well, he'll bless you there too. He knows our limitations. Praise the Most High God. Let's continue here. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 16 and read down to verse 21. Isaiah 9, 16 to 21, praise the Most High. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore, Yahweh see on their fatherless and widow. For every one is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh father. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns and shall kindle in the thickets of the fog. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of Yahweh of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. And he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. They together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Yes, brothers and sisters. Now, I want to also point out, as the Most High is describing here punishment and spanking to Israel and Judah, this same punishment and spanking will come on the heathen when Israel and Judah Awaken. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy? We just read it this morning. We read it every Sabbath morning, but maybe maybe it might have gotten by you. But this is what notice what it says, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's read Deuteronomy 30. From verse 6, from verse 6 down to verse 8, notice Deuteronomy 30, verse 6 to 8. We read it this morning, but notice what happened. And Yahweh thy Most High will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy Most High with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Watch. And Yahweh thy Most High will put all these curses, all these curses upon thine enemies. On and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. See, the table's going to be turned. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. So what you see in him do to Ephraim and Judah in the Bible, what you see him do to the Hebrews that came off the slave ships, all of those things are going to come on the heat. And as a matter of fact, I want you to see one more thing. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18. I'm going to start at verse 4. Down and read down the verse 6 of Revelation chapter 18, verses 4 to 6. Notice what it says here. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yah hath remembered her iniquity. Reward her as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double, according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So everything you see here in the spanking of our people, the heathen gonna get double. They're gonna get double. And you know what it says here where he says, his anger is not turned away, 
but his hand is stretched out still. As long as his hand is stretched out, that's the spanking. See, when he stretched out his hand, what he's saying, I'm bringing you the punishment. I'm bringing you the spanking. I'm bringing you the chastisement. So he's keeping his hand stretched out. He, you think, oh, that's enough. Please stop. It's like it's like you ever caught. See, they don't do it too, too much today because people don't know how to act. But back in the day, when your aunt, your grandmother, or your mother said, go get me the switch. <laughs> you remember that? Go get me the switch. Now, my father wouldn't even say, go get the switch. He said, go get my belt. He had me go get the belt. And you be begging him, please stop. All right, all right, won't do it again, won't do it again. And his hand is stretched out still. <laughs> and you thought it was never going to end. And his hand is stretched out still. You understand? So that's what the father's doing here. And when he's ready to turn the tables, the awakening turns the table. That's why it's important that we really bless in this awakening. It turns the table. The awakening causes us to receive the blessings we were supposed to receive from the beginning. First of the father's spirit, then later of the kingdom. But the heathen that reject the truth, that reject the father's word, that reject his prophets, that reject his spirit, they're going to get double. They're going to have double punishment coming to them. See? Now, double coming. You receive lies, it's a problem. It's going to be a problem when you receive lies. It's going to be a problem. Okay. Let's pause here. Let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll take a break and come back for the second part. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we ask.